In this video, we'll look at some examples of how to evaluate function notation. So in this example, we're given that f of x is equal to 2x minus 1 divided by 3x plus 2. Now what that means is, whenever we see something plugged into f, so if we see f of anything, then whatever it is inside that parentheses, whatever x is, we're going to substitute that value in for these other x's, and that's going to tell us what f of that thing is. The possibility would be that we're given uh, that we want to evaluate f of 2. So what that means is that f of 2, just to emphasize here I'll write the 2 in a different color, is going to equal 2 times the 2 that's in the parentheses minus 1 divided by 3 times that same 2 that was in parentheses plus 2. So again, notice how the 2 that was in the parentheses is where the x is in our given formula, and that means that we substituted that same 2 in for where the x's were. And now all we need to do is simplify. So on the top, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. And on the bottom, 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8. And that's it. So 3 over 8 is our answer. Now it can get a little... Let's suppose we were asked to evaluate f of negative 1. Not too bad. But again, the idea is that f of negative 1 is going to equal what we get when we replace those x's by negative 1's. Now, because we're dealing with negatives, we just need to be really careful with our grouping. So I always like to just default and put negative numbers in parentheses, just in case. Sometimes you don't need to, but it's never a bad idea to have extra, extra parentheses. And so now what do we have? So on the top, we have 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 1. And then at the bottom, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus 2. Let's do these step by step. So on the top now, minus 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And on the bottom, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And then finally, negative 3 divided by negative 1 works out to be positive 3. So positive 3 is our answer. Okay. So in this case, this example, now we have to, uh, we're asked to simplify f of a plus 3. Now, we don't know what that mysterious letter a is, but we can still use the same principle to figure out what that would be. So again, whatever is inside my parentheses, in this case it's a plus 3, rather than a simple number inside, now I have some algebraic expression. But the rule doesn't change. We still have 2 times, and again, I'm just going to use parentheses here, a plus 3, minus 1 divided by 3 times a plus 3 plus 2. Now if we weren't asked to simplify this, we could just leave it like this, but they did ask us to simplify, so we should try to simplify as much as we can. So first we're going to distribute this 2, we're going to distribute that across the parentheses, the a plus 3. That's going to give us 2a, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1. And on the bottom, we're going to distribute again. 3 times a is 3a, 3 times 3 is 9, and then plus 2. And now, there's not too much more simplifying we can do. Uh, on the top, we're going to have 2a plus 6 minus 1 gives us a plus 5. And on the bottom, 3a plus 9 plus 2, that gives us plus 11. And that's as simplified as that gets. Again, you might be tempted to try to divide out the a on the top and the a on the bottom but we know that that doesn't work because we couldn't factor an a out of everything on the top, and we couldn't factor an a out of everything on the bottom. So these a's have to stay put. And so this is our final answer. Okay, this time we've got stuff inside the parentheses and we've got stuff outside the parentheses. But again, the rule is the same. So whenever we see something inside an f parentheses, in this case it's negative x, all that's different in this example is that we're going to multiply whatever we get by 2. Right? Remember our order of operations. We do the stuff in the parentheses first. So we're going to do, figure out what f of negative x is first. And then whatever it turns out to be, we're going to multiply it by 2. That's it. So let's forget about the 2 temporarily. We can't stop writing it down because it's there, but let's just not worry about it right now. So f of minus x is going to be 2 times negative x. minus 1 divided by 3 times negative x 
plus 2. Again, let's simplify the top and the bottom. So on the top, we've got 2 times negative x is negative 2x, minus 1. And on the bottom, 3 times negative x is negative 3x, plus 2. All right, so now we've got 2 times a fraction. So when we multiply 2 times a fraction, sometimes it's convenient to think of that 2 as being 2 over 1. And now we've got a fraction times a fraction. And we multiply a fraction by a fraction, we multiply the tops, and we multiply the bottoms. And now we're almost done. On the top, when we distribute that 2, we get negative 4x. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. And on the bottom, we just multiplied by 1, so nothing exciting happens. We just get negative 3x plus 2. And again, you might be tempted to try to simplify that further, but we can't reduce that fraction. We can't do anything to make that any better. So we're done. Right, one more example just to show you how crazy some of these things can get. Now we've got f of x plus h. So we've got two variables, but again, nothing has really changed. The rule is the same. When we've got something crazy in our parentheses, in this case it's x plus h, we just replace all of the x's in our function expression, all of the x's here, with that x plus h. So in this case we've got two times the quantity x plus h. minus 1, divided by 3 times the quantity x plus h, plus 2. Again, we're going to distribute, simplify the top and the bottom. On the top, when we distribute that 2, we get 2x plus 2h, minus 1, all divided by, when we distribute the 3 on the bottom, we get 3x plus 3h, plus 2. Nothing else we can do to simplify that, so we're done. That's it.